Greetings, love and respect, everyone. Welcome to episode 10.5, where, yo, we chopped it up so much in episode 10, like we felt like we had to break this thing up because we didn't want to make a four hour video that y'all would have to sit through. But we got footage to share. Uh, I just conducted a Wissahickon Wellness Walk with Wissahickon Wellness. We went up to the Grandmother's Council Rock and the Tadiskin statue. And whoo, when, you know, the mysteries keep, mysteries of the Wissahickon keep unfolding. So, you know, I want to share that footage with you. Check it out. Good. Good. <laughs> so yeah, this is the grandmother's rock, grandmother's council rock. You can see it has like a womb, mm. yoni energy. Wow. You know, has the yeah. It, it's it's a rock that really embodies the feminine energy. And we are at the heights of the city. That trail, remember when we were, we kind of walked up a wider gravel trail uh -huh. and then turned off? Yes. That is Rex Avenue. Mm. Okay, so if you were to take that up about a block, it'll become uh, like a paved street. And it doesn't go continuous. There's like... Uh, it, does, it doesn't go continually up, but if you were to take it up to Germantown Ave, if you were to take it up to Germantown Ave, uh, you would be at Germantown and Rex Ave, which is the summit. You know, they call it the top of the hill. It's the highest point in Philadelphia. Germantown and Rex. Yes. So now, the name of this area and Algonquin that I could most put together is called Nittany Bakum or Nitty Bunk or something similar to that. I'm, you know, we need to find someone who really knows the language and can articulate it. But it means place, it, it has a dual meaning. One is easy to get to, the other is place where the warriors meet. And I think that those are both references to like what is the ultimate significance of this area. Again, this is the place where the queens meet. So we knew we, we know Shots and Moxon is the place where the kings meet. And again, that's down Penn Treaty Park, right? And that area, which is along the Lenapihana River, we call it the Delaware River today. But you could access that place by trails where there was like, uh, uh, what do you say, safe passage, you know, by treaty, right? All the clans could go to where the kings meet because that's where, if there was intertribal conflict that needed to be reconciled, Right? And, and traditionally, whenever conflict needs to be reconciled, you go before, go before the elders. And the Lenape were, you know, their name means grandfather, so the elders of humanity. So many of the Algonquin clans, I want to say 13, but it may be, you know, may have played out more or less, right? But uh, 13 different clans in the area could go by safe passage to Shaks and Moxon and meet with the kings, meet with the elders, work things out, right? But up here, like, and let's use D.C. for an example, because D.C. is like that for this country. It's the federated capital where all the representatives of the various states come. Even if they had beef. 
Make a couple Whether of we're not, right. Beef, no beef, beef just go work you know, things out. Right. Regard, yeah. But then DC has its own municipal center where the mayor, city council, mm -hmm. work things out for the management of the city, right? That's what this area was. Gotcha. And this is where the grandmothers met to talk about issues of land yeah. allocation, land management, okay? And uh, this is easy to get to from Shots and Moxon or Penn Treaty Park, literally, because where does Germantown Avenue go to? Shaka Maxson. I mean, almost. We were to get up on Germantown Ave and Rex just, and just take Germantown Avenue straight. We'll be in Chestnut Hill. Where is it going to take us? Shaka Maxson Avenue? Huh? <laughs> Shaka Maxson Avenue? Shaka Maxson Avenue, right there to Penn Treaty Park. How about that? Shaka Maxson Avenue. It'll take you directly to Penn Treaty Park. How about that? You mean mm -hmm. that's where it terminates? That's where in the city, is. yeah. The like city. if you take it into Germantown, town, you like take Germantown Avenue, you can't go no further. Mm -hmm. Which will be the Delaware Avenue. Mm -hmm. You know, Germantown is diagonal yes. to all the other streets and going south. Yeah, going south. into the city, it's going to lead you straight to the place where the Kings meet. Okay. So we can see Germantown Ave was connected mm -hmm. where the Kings meet to where the Queens meet. How about that? How about That's that? They meet in the middle type thing. Right? <laughs> well, it got that name because this whole, what, what was known as Nittany Bank Conk or Nitty Bank became all of Germantown. But now the original charter for Germantown included five neighborhoods, all that are historically relevant to where the Queens meet. That's Chestnut Hill, Mount Airy, Germantown, Worcester, and German uh, and East Falls. So all five of those, what are basically separate communities now, all of them made up Germanopolis, mm. or Germantown, right? And Again, this is the place where the Queens meet. East Falls, what's significant about East Falls in this discussion? Just like current East Falls, what's something that well, should really... The Queen, the Queens. Yeah, the something Queens. Grace really, Kelly? What? Grace Kelly, no? Well, that's, I think she's part of this, as the new Queen, mm -hmm. right? Queen. But when you go to East Falls, there's three streets, little East Falls. Got three streets with Queen's names. Queen Lane, uh -huh. Indian Queen Lane, and New Queen Street. Okay? So, when you read the history of East Falls, that seemed like the place of absolute abundance. You would see, like, when, when you read the history of East Falls before uh, the Philadelphia Waterworks flooded the Maniunk River, they call it the Schuylkill now, but before the Maniunk was flooded, right there at East Falls by the Falls Bridge, there was a natural rock outcropping that when the, again, before the dam at the Philadelphia Waterworks blocked the fish migration and spawning patterns. They say that this rock formation that created like a semi-dam, right? You could catch like three, four, five hundred thousand fish like leisurely, not even oh. trying. Hmm. Okay? And when you just read about the abundance of this region, it was literally like the mythical paradise of the old world. And we do cover this on 
My latest episode of From the 40th Parallel, yeah, yeah, episode yeah. 9, you gotta see yeah, it. Yeah. The Queens hold the key. We go deep in on the history of East Falls and the abundance of that area. So I'm not going to get into that here, other than to say, you could take the Wissahickon Creek, the, the trail right from the Wissahickon Creek, straight from East Falls, straight here. So this place is very easy to get to, you know, as its name implies, okay? So, uh, again, when we factor all that in, that this was where the grandmothers met, when we study the history of Tadiskin, who was a sachem, a manipulated satchel at that. Uh, and I guess you could say the manipulated satchel responsible for the expulsion of the Lenape west of the Alleghenies, because that's more or less what the Treaty of Easton has said, that y'all be free in all the lands west of the Alleghenies. Okay? Uh, and then to put his statue on the Grandmother Council Rock mm. in non Lenape traditional mm. gear. But the actual gear of the Plains Indians. And so, even if you look at like some of the powwow traditions the Plains Lenape hold in like Oklahoma, uh, they're not even really living their original tradition, you know, but like amalgamated traditions from other Plains Indians and maybe even some uh, recreated history superimposed on them, mm -hmm. you know. All of that's embodied in this statue. It's, it's, it's yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's deep. Yeah, it's like an onion. Yeah. So definitely uh, keep all this in your mind, salute the grandmothers, know like what it is to be here. Yeah. Can I give a, well, please. It's a bit of a jump track if that's okay. Sorry. So since you, since we started these tours, you always talked about, this is a shift to geology, but I have a question about how it might connect to this place because You've always talked about the garnets and the tourmalines in the stones, right? So since we got there, check that one out. And I have Ooh. some more heat. Right. Um, so since we've been in this place, I've been half listening and half just like yeah, astoundingly. And there's, I started collecting. If you look around and I have a few that I can show. Yeah. So this whole stone has like garnets all through it. This large one, these samples here, that one has some of the clearest and like almost gem quality, but then also just started to find loose little tourmalines and garnets right here. Wow. So I wonder about if part of the consecration or the, what was special about this space is that the, so it's the, um, the bumps, like the black and brown and dark red bumps are garnets and tourmaline. And I wonder like, it's like ridiculously yeah. abundant here. Right. It's like, the schist is the shiny. Yeah. Oh, you can keep, okay. yeah. So, so right. the schist, remember we said that these, crystals are growing in a matrix of schist. Yes. So schist is uh, just silica and aluminum, mm -hmm. basically. Mm -hmm. And it's soft. Is no, the black? These are tourmaline. And, and then the dark red are the garnets. The silica, aluminum hey, but you, matrix, you'll appreciate this one. It's crazy. It's the garnets, the tourmalines, the different crystals crystallize. So yeah, this mm -hmm. is a great wow, like... <laughs> Yeah, check these, check these Definitely ones out. Check these out. There's uh, so you see the shift. Oh, and the right. Garnet, oh, wow. means, wow. garnet <laughs> means like a seed. Wow. Like pomegranate so, means that, thousand uh, seeds. Yeah. And garnets grow yeah. in their matrixes like a seed. It'll just kind of pop up. Okay. Wow. So. Uh, wow. Less like Pop brilliant, like, like the here. holy this whole stone. You know, yes. Here you can see the. Uh, yes. Really, if you stand here, you can get them really good. Oh, give thanks. 
Like go up a little bit high and look up and see you get the whole thing in one shot. Oh yeah. Just literally everywhere. Literally, Yes, those are metamorphic, formed by heat and pressure, at least 30 to 40 feet under the ground. There are a few seeds too. Yeah, but if you, if you keep keep looking, they're just around. Point. Yeah. That's a tourmaline. Yeah, the garnets are like these guys, these darker red brown ones. Um, yeah. Just you want to check out all of these specimens. Where you said y'all saw some loose garnets? Yeah, look at my hand. Is this one? It looks uh, like <laughs> right, like that's that's what these appear to be, right? Yeah, it's just definitely. like straight loose garnets. Definitely. And then if you look, this one is the one that I found that is like <laughs> yeah, that's bananas. Look at those. Oh wow! <laughs> right? Yeah, look at those. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, that one will probably pop. pop yeah. I know. And if we wanted to. We could just literally drop that and it'll break apart. That's and right. Harvest, right? That's but I, right. But yeah. Oh wow, that's a crazy one. And there's a mix. So that is definitely a torm. I think is a tourmaline, and the redder ones are the garnets. Mm. I wonder if those are large garnets up there. Because it's like it is so. That's crazy. You comfortable, bro? Oh yeah. Yeah, huh? I'm gonna send you all the stuff that I'm taking. Yeah. Okay. Oh, thank you, bro. Yeah. Because this is just that. Have not. Oh, I can't mm. wait to just that. picking them just up right up. there. <laughs> Wow, awesome. Look at clothes, Let me see everywhere. what you got. Oh, yeah, you got a nice one. You got a nice garnet. Up there is covered, too. That is what that is? Wow. I think that's I think that's what it is. Yo. So we can see this is why the grandmothers met here. Yo. You know? Yeah, it's abundance. Hey, Bob, you ever been up here? I, I, not recently. <laughs> it does look like marble, right? Yeah, you yeah. Like garnet, type of crystal. Mother Earth. Here, I can show you the tourmaline. Somebody actually wrote on it. <laughs> I know, that's why, man, that's a shame, man. They might have wrote on that. People want to write on our grand. So this was, this was, I think, uh, uh, the appropriate next step for everything which we've done together. We started, we started with uh, the meeting at the Wissahickon, what was that, three months ago, two months ago, I don't know. And then we came to the Susquehanna, we came back to the Wissahickon, and now we came back, we came back um, to the West, and we went to Ephrata. And Ephrata makes sense because Ephrata Cloister is where the mystics of the Wissahickon, once, once that was no longer in operation, they set up their, their permanent colony in Ephrata, Pennsylvania, which is in Lancaster. And we talked about this before, about how it's from the Cocalco Creek, which goes into the Conestoga, which then uh, empties into the Susquehanna, right where the petroglyphs are. So we've got all of that stuff kind of going on. And I knew, and to be quite honest, I have not been to the cloister. I went there once when I first came to Lancaster, like 20 years ago, and I didn't have any point of reference nor any interest in being there, to be quite honest. But this trip, which we took together, um, was was it was the perfect setup. And what we discovered was was fantastic. But what made this happen, what was kind of like the the actual events in reality, which which brought this to fruition was I got a message from a guy, a guy who I met. I met him 
uh, probably February of 2020, right before, right before um, the whole sort of COVID mess came about. And him and his brother reached out to me and they said, hey, would you be interested in doing like in-person uh, uh, presentations on all the stuff you've done about Lancaster. It's fascinating to us and we think that would be great. So we went, we met, we had all these plans to do this and then COVID hit and like all of that disappeared. Now, fast forward to where we are right now, we got back, I got, I got back in touch with him, uh, this, this guy named Andre, this guy named Andre. And when I met with him, he was working out of a shared office space, which um, I happen to be in that same building right now. He's no longer here. But the point I'm trying to make is we can see these links. We could see how the how the 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 spiral has been spiraling around. So I'm finding myself in this building in downtown Lancaster right now, which which, you know, I'm working out of and we're having this conversation out of. Um, and so. I hear from Andre just recently because he's been following all of our uh, our conversations. He's like, listen, you got to come and check out my family farm, check out my family farm, which is in Ephrata, which is like a handful of miles from the Ephrata cloister. And he's like, this family farm has been in my family. Uh, my children are the 10th generations who have lived on this land and the very first family member that lived there, they have their deed, which goes right back to the to the Penn Syndicate, if you will. And so it was uh, the the Andre who opened his house to us. He was unbelievably gracious, and the entire family gracious. was gracious. But it was so to me on a personal level, I was blown away to think of the uniqueness, the uniqueness of being able to live on the land which 10 generations of your family have lived literally in the house, which is which was built in 1730. Eight, I think he said it was by by his family member. They're still living in that house. And they have they have probably a couple hundred acres, and they currently have a a flower farm, which I think symbolically is um, is fantastic. So anyway, Andre opened up his home and their historical resources to us. Um, and he gave us his tour. And so what we want to begin with, one of the most interesting things is within their family um, collection, they have an actual copy of one of the Bibles, which was printed at the Ephrata Cloister. And so I think that's that's kind of where we want to start with this with this 10.5 is going in and seeing that and seeing how our day unfolded. All right, greetings. This is Ross Ben and Mystic Mike with the Queens Who Hold the Key. We're here live and direct for episode 10, Mystics of the 40th Parallel. We're here in Mystic Ephrata, so get ready. Hold hold on. Your, did your family have a connection to the cloister? <clears throat> I don't, I really don't think so. I don't know how we would, um, other, other than, than it being... You uh, you had ancestors in this land at the same time this was active. Yeah, yeah, across over on the other side of the Ephrata Mountain. Yep. And and what is the historical significance of this place again? Of the cloister? Yeah. This was like a, a they community. They, uh -huh. they they printed who and... who purposefully and collectively agreed to live in a certain way. Okay. And so they said, we all have the same ideals. Okay. We all have the same beliefs. We all see the world the same way. And we all want to go and meet life in the same way. And we have fat, and this is where we will be. Huh. And then on a practical level, it was like, just like what Andre was saying. It's like, you know, this was, there's printing presses here. There was mints here. Yeah. They they made so do you think that they Bible that industry. your family had, do you think that was made here? That's, oh, it they was. Said it it was said it was printed, printed, printed here. Yeah. yeah, it was. That's right. So, like, I mean... I don't know how we ever got our hands on that Bible, but, um, you know, my grandpa collected a lot of things, and a lot of things he collected throughout his days, and then a lot of things were just stuff that were still, that were from the farm, you know, before his day. Right. So most, or what I find most interesting in the way how I like to frame up this is by putting it into context with what was going on in the Wissahickon. Right. So 
they were out there and they were in the wilderness and they built the they built the uh, the written house. Uh, yeah. They are, are like more so like the the forty foot by forty foot. Um, oh, you talking about specifically? Yeah, I'm the, talking uh, like specifically the monks. Yeah, the hermits monks, of the ridge. The hermits of the ridge. Society of the woman of the they, wilderness. They were living like for without getting any any deeper than that. They were doing that, and then Conrad Bicel comes. Right. Like maybe about like what 15, 10, 20 years after Kelp died. Right. And he's like, hey, I came all the way over from Germany and I'm joining it. And they're like, oh, you didn't get the news. He's like, what? Well, you know, whatever the news is. And so it was Conrad Matthias, I think. Okay. And he was, he was Kelp's right hand man. Okay. And he pulled Conrad Beisel over and he's like, this is what to do. Like, we can't do this here anymore. This is no longer the wilderness. Philadelphia has grown and all of that. You need to go, go west, west. And you need to build something more permanent. And... That's what this is. That's what the effort of cloister. Heavy industry in an, in an area that supplies what you need. So and this was founded by Bice, Biesel. This was founded by Biesel. All this right. This was founded by Biesel under the directive of like there was a whole Conrad bunch of stuff Matthias that, and yes. Christopher Witt. Yes. What and year so, was this? So the 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 cloister was founded. I want to say like 1734 or 1732 is in that Agreed. range. And this was like within two years of Lancaster City being established as well. I forget, one's two years older than the other. Okay. Um, but this is like, you know, a good 20 years after um, Beasel had arrived in Philadelphia. So this here is... Why are the lights out? I don't know why it's fairly dark in here, but this is the common room area. On either side are workrooms, and then surrounding the workrooms are the bedrooms. And the layout that you see here on this first floor is the same then. On the second and third, fourth floor, then just an open attic space for storage. And then the room to the far side here is the office of Maria Eicher, or Mother Maria. She was. Look like some skull and bone. name on this tombstone is faded. Oh no. There's an actual, so, uh, there's so an there's actual like World War II Dick Winters. He, like if you ever seen uh, I know Dick Winters Brothers, is. Have yeah. You? Yeah. So my family is buried, just caddied him at Berkstraus up here in Ephrata. Yep. It's a uh, and so there's always flags and stuff there. I thought Dick Winters was from Bushy. Nope. No, he's from this area. He, he used to. Yeah, the question is, what are these arches at the bottom of the fence? This is the same archway as those ones over there. Yeah. Only as you can see, this doesn't even have the little bit peeking out anymore. This side's right. been completely buried. Right. So if that's half buried, this is completely buried. We have no idea how deep how this deep it goes. wall actually goes. Yes. What we're looking at is the top of something. Yes. And, you know, it could be five feet down. It could be... 20 feet down we That's have no right. idea that's right because it doesn't make sense to build archways and then that you don't one. right that you don't you can't enter through right unless it has a spiritual significance of this being a cemetery by creating some portal right for ancestors of the dead undead to make moves Maybe it is irrigation, looking at these. It could be irrigation, but then again, why would you bury this one completely? Right. Huh. So why uh, would Peter Miller have a... You see this have one, a globe, Michael? right. Huh. So Peter Miller buried right next to Conrad Biesel. With a globe. Looks more mm -hmm. like a Saturn. Yes. It's like with a ring around it. See the huh. ring? Yes. And it might even just be a, what is that, a vase maybe? Oh, you know what? That's interesting, man. It is. What we got to look that up. It's a symbol we don't know. Hey, Michael. Right. Get some traffic. Oh. And 
And I did hear two oh. pipes and two. Oh, what type? Old dusty. Wow. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I got two more if anyone wants some water. Oh my goodness. Yeah. I haven't used some water since before. I just like to work when I get them out. So this was uh, 1729. Wow. Oh my God. Made at the effort of cloister. That's what Granddad said. <laughs> wow. Go ahead. Flip through it. I knew you'd like all the the imagery. And, and this is like the yeah. message Bible, right? Yeah, King. Yes. Yep. And NIV. <laughs> and the NIV. Yeah. And the New Living Translation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. All the words are exactly the same. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. <coughs> is it a Masonic Bible? Look right there. We got the yeah, tabernacle right there. We don't know. Uh, no. I'm not sure. It's definitely sure was definitely and everything like that. What what what, what are these? Are those, does that look like lightning to you or, or clouds? Rivers? Like those lines right coming off of mountains, rivers. rivers. Right, exactly. <laughs> like it could be read a couple the different three letters. Rivers. Lightning. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> right. And this, how did this come into your family? It's uh hard to say. I would. I think it's just you know it's been passed down for the last nine generations so wow and this is that German mm -hmm. yeah it's all that's what I, uh, it's all in probably being high in ger high German this is in high German yep oh yeah. Satan. and uh, <laughs> was there a uh, is there a paper mill was there is there like a paper mill local there must yeah there must have been a, some sort of paper mill local um, they grew a lot of uh, products that made paper so um, touch this yep what kind of paper is it yeah, the tooth here? of the paper is so raw it's incredible it's, uh, <laughs> it's so like definitely uh, some sort of wow. like wood paper or like yeah. a, it could be even hemp. like a hemp fiber hemp, yeah yeah, you can feel the, the tooth of it. Because it's not Extras. very, it's not very papery. It's very like loose and uh, uh, fabricy. So that's why I would yeah. say it's like a a flax. I've or never heard more a, elegance describing paper. Like I've never heard tooth describe the paper, but I know just what you talk about, and then the elegance of how it flows. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, or like it was. It, the would, it would. It, my guess is it's either hemp or maybe flax. Maybe I think they use those same fibers to do a lot of the same things. So, yeah. yeah. What, is, what does this look like? These are names? Yeah, this is when they're like going, probably saying they're like doing the lineage. lineage. Yeah, somewhere. yeah. Okay. That get, it gets really long too in some of the uh, Old Testament books. Okay, we've got wow. a picture here. Yeah. What does that look like? This is cool. Yeah, this would be something you got to pull up oh, on oh, the yeah, screen. Lean your really. heads in. You're fine. I don't, don't let me uh, don't let me slow you down here. Like I like this idea of randomly like finding the pictures. Who wants to pick the next picture? All right, mm. Andre, we got That's it. a great question. Careful. What was that? Oh, yeah, we got another one. Picture of the lion and the lamb. Lion, lamb. Oh, oh my God! God. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. So called so Mandela. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> What's up, dude? <laughs> so we just open to the page with a lion. Like who who who's re who wrestles a lion? Uh, uh, that's his name. Uh, Daniel. 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 Seventeen ninety nine. This yep. ledger. Yep. And so, how long has this property been within your family, associated with your family? Uh, since at least seventeen eighty. Seventeen eighty. Wow. Yep. So my kids would be the tenth generation to live on the farm. And wow. currently, it's a flower farm. Yep. Mm. Yeah. Yep. It's a commercial flower farm. Wow. Interesting. We do uh, fall crops. So you saw the chrysanthemums across the road there. Yeah. Um, the that's pot? part of our fall pro products. Yep. And then we do a uh, Christmas. We do poinsettias. Mm. And that's then fun. the spring crop we do. Oh man, we not just eat, no. We do herbert daisies. A lot of things. It's 
probably 80 different varieties of plants on the farm, 100 different varieties. So wow. like, there's lots of trees <laughs> wow. on the upper mountain. It's a very biodiverse <laughs> area. Okay. Um, and so. And who lived there? You're telling about who lived there. So yeah. So from yeah. the upper yeah. mountain yeah. to yeah. Bowman's yeah. like yeah. 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 in this <laughs> Cocalico yeah. area. So you see yeah. West Cocalico yeah. and East Cocalico, yeah. right? Um, in this area, <laughs> they say was uh, a pocket of uh, Native Americans that it's funny was about how ten to fifteen thousand uh, people yeah. strong, yeah. and yeah. were there yeah. since yeah. the yeah. beginning. Yeah. <laughs> they say that the barn down here was helped built by one of the last ones of them, mm. uh, 1813. Trust her on my account. And so it was, uh, you know, with your with the things that you talk about about how things are pointed up the Susquehanna and the, um, or the petroglyphs pointing up to the Cocalco area. Mm -hmm. yes. you know, it's a very interesting area and there's a very old um, civilization that was there as right. well as... And we have one of the wheels, they, one of their wheels out front too. That would, that would have, that little bowl You're that right. they very, much, very well may have used, yup. And so fries. What was that, Friesville Road? Yep. So you that's named after your family. Yep. yep. Okay. So that's Fries and Friesville Road. That's where the that's the the road where you where it meets here at the farm. Uh -huh. Yep. So and that was a covered bridge. As you can see, so here's a covered bridge right there. There's a picture of it. Um, and uh, here are pictures of the old you know the farm back in the day. The covered bridge was uh, uh, right, right here, here, right over here. <coughs> yep, and it, bur it burned down in eighty eighty, and that that water we passed over. That's the Conestega. That would be the Muddy Creek. The yeah, the uh, it's the marketplace of hell. And look right there. Marketplace of hell. Yeah, that's what it says right This there. one talks wow. about moon phases or something like that. And uh, the Ray Bantine happening. The Bray Bantine. Just account. what they, you know, how they publish things in these magazines. Gotcha. Like they would have been getting these, the Esoteric magazine, right? Other mm. things like mm. that, you know. Just some, like what they provided back in the day. Secretary of the War Department. It's still happening today, you know. Yes. Like the so-called New Age. It's not New Age. No. And, it's like they and it's like weird. Things. Like what? They yeah. had their own calendar, which is why, yeah. like, I thought it was something they yeah. would like. Mm. So, they got like conjunctions. Zero. The sun is in conjunction right. with Saturn. Wow! Look at that. There's an old and farmer's almanac. And this is from almanac. 1892. Yep. And there's an old farmer's almanac that says how to make uh, alchemy gold. Hmm. And so I wanted to try and find that for you too. And uh, I looked through all of this. It took me like maybe two years to do it. And I looked through them some areas, but I got all this stuff. But it's like you could come back again and again and find more stuff. Yeah. Uh, so we got to we got to show you guys. So this there's 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 a very um, there's there's a solid amount of evidence that what we're looking at right here is reincarnated. We could see the reincarnation on that picture over there. Huh. Where where's the 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 John Fry? Is oh, it John, John Fry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so we mean, can see that right here. Because we're brothers. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're brothers. So and so it's it's funny. We saw like the the the. In the past, John Fry would look at one of his one of his journals, and it's just like listed as like lecture one, lecture two. This is how, so, this yeah, is yeah, how yeah. we see it. A lot it, like, of show and everything. A lot of research. <laughs> 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 I'm just hanging on. So he was working with the flower of life back then, huh? Yeah. Right. Right? That's what that yeah, is, right? Yeah. yeah. Like sacred, sacred geometry. geometry. Sacred kind of geometry. Wow. Wow. Interesting. Yeah. It's a shame it's got back. I used it. I used it. Good. <laughs> but you have old welding stuff in here. I mean, they, they fabricate their own stuff and made their own things. Oh, well, look at this one right here. This bank bag. This is a nice. Hmm. Yep. That's a yep. That's. I had a bunch of them. That would that would definitely be. Here are some of the Philadelphia. Here's some of the old uh, Native artifacts. <laughs> We've found. You see that old Philadelphia bank bag? Stuff for wow, grinding. Look at that. Thousand uh, dollars. For grinding. Like that. That this is what have could have uh, grinded a lot of stuff that they made their medicines and spices huh. out of. It's Indian. Indian artifacts, artifacts found. found on the property. The smokehouse would have been would have had all of these on top. Clay. 
clay shingles. It's been around for a long time. You, know, you can't have yeah, in lots thing. of people's hands. Yeah. Yep. You want to hold it? Old irons. I like those old irons. <laughs> all those arrowheads, too. Yep. Wow. Yep. And is that the deed? No. 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 What is that? Uh, that's just an indentured. Which I... We have a lot of those. I'm not. I think they're pretty common before the 1800s. And what what is people, being indentured? I think that was just like you <laughs> weren't an indentured servant anymore. Like working out, right? Yeah. So like uh, more or less indenturing you're free, you're someone for like American. five, seven years, and then yes, once you uh, finish your working, right, you right. get like exactly. like you're a free that's man. How wow. A lot of this stuff was around, and that was all back in here. Yep. That's why. And so this would be one of your family members? Uh, I think so. Wow. They had another one in there? Yeah, I saw the other one. Um, oh. Now, they called this a Red Rose Farm because it was it has a Red Rose deed. You know the Red Rose deeds? No, I don't know um, Red Rose deeds. And so Red I don't Rose this is one of them, but this would have been in that Red I. It may be. What is the definition of a red rose deed? Uh, that was one that was given from Thomas and Richard and William, the ones that have Thomas, uh, Richard and William, or Thomas and Richard's signatures on them. And I these believe. are the proprietors of Penn? These are Thomas and Richard, were Penn's sons. Penn's sons, yes. Yep. Yeah, yep. and known so historically as the proprietors of Penn. And this talks about the native gardens and everything that's on the property in there, in that. So what does it, so it says? What does it say about the native gardens? Can you read that? Uh, Can you find that? So it, um, my grandpa could read this because he can read cursive about. really well. Yeah, no, it's interesting. Seeing that. It talks about like the trees and, and, and one of the one of the things it says is that there was the one tree in the that was a directional tree and they would they would basically bonsai it so that it was like an L and so they would go up and go over and then it would come up and wow. that that was like a, a line for. Um, right, a demarcation point. Yeah, yeah. You get and, your so, direction. and that was how the natives did it, and there was one on there on what, the farm. What is so this? That, that looks be, like just a seal. Just that was the seal. That, that was the seal. Yeah. That was the seal. Yep, but this, yeah, this room hasn't changed. Talking about clocks and interesting clockwork. Um, one of the oldest, yeah, awesome. one of the <laughs> oldest clockmakers in Ephrata on Main Street and in the area of Lancaster was. Uh, Jacob Georges. George, Gorg Gorgas. Gorgas. Yeah. You know him? Yeah, well, he's big in Mount Airy. This is an original Gorgas, Lane. Gorgas clock. Wow. wow. Yep, that. From, and I think it comes from the 1700s. Huh. Uh, it's a it's moon. an old one. Yeah, so my uh, my dad sun. always my dad said he wouldn't he doesn't care about anything that he gets from grandma except this clock. This is the only thing he wants. Wow. And you can you wind it up every day with the wind, which he wants to do, or you wind it up every Sunday or something. I forget, you know, so much given so much weird things on this farm. So but you wind it up and then it starts and then you gotta do it another week later or day later. Work? This uh no it needs new needles and stuff, but this is a cool piece that my grandpa bought when he was a kid for like five cents or something like that. Wow. He said he got it for a nickel. Are those red roses? Like, those would be red roses, yep. Where are the red roses? Behind you. And, that... and then the seal, the fry seal over oh, here. Right there. Yeah. Oh my goodness. That's uh, been there for a long time. Huh. It's like Slytherin Gryffindor and fries. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like it fits right in and fries, yeah. So that's a, a trotting horse? Uh, yeah, as, you know, as I their never really like pulled it apart, but it's always been. I can here. help you decode it. It's you know, been like been I had to get my heraldry you, uh, more, keys, but. Uh, it's been there, uh, <laughs> been there for a long time. Yeah, I can help them with that. Uh, what is it? I think like. One of the presidents drank out of the creek on the farm. Whether it was Lincoln or Washington, Washington when he was Washington, passing through going yeah, the, the Washington crossing, he came and drank Drink out of the, the Muddy Creek or something like that. <laughs> wow. Before, and the springs up here before he right. went into Valley Forge. Mm. Wow. So that must have been on his way from Germantown. 
Yes. Because they lost the Battle of Germantown. Yep. And they drank beer here, he drank a bunch of water, and then left, and then had stuff shipped from this farm to him while he was in Valley Forge. Hmm. That's so this farm right here. Some people are on and would have been built uh, in 1813 by one of the last Native Americans in the Cocalco area. Um, and he was like a cacao code. He could have been. That's what we're researching. You know, that's what we're all kind of working together on finding out. Is, is this one of the, is this, a, you know, one of the oldest civilizations around? And there's a lot of energy stored here. There was a, on the original feed through the um, building or to the land here, it talks about there being the medicine wheel on the farm that the natives had in the Native garden, which had been where they buried there, where they had. So there's a there's even told that there was a native burial site on the farm here, which we wow. we pretty we have that discovered and everything like that. And you said so, you have found it. Yeah, yeah. Well, we know about it. You know, a lot of like I was telling to, to Michael, like uh, a lot of things on the farm here are passed down verbally. Okay. Um, and so we can. Um, Go down here and check this out. Did you check out that tree right there? Yeah. Which one? That one. That's the family tree. Agnes. Yeah, Agnes would be. So, like, how high it went in the basement. So, like, how high it went in the basement. So, um, it flooded out the whole campground. It was a shame. But this is the creek. And the bridge would have been right there. So, there's pictures and whatnot. That would have been the covered bridge. That was the covered bridge. And why was it so significant? Like, was it. It was, it's, you one can see first. on the bridge, it says, uh, bridge number one. Oh, in Lancaster County? On the bridge. You can look. So, is mm -hmm. that how you would interpret that, that there was the first covered bridge in Lancaster? I, it may have been. Yeah. Why was the first one? I don't know if that's, it's not the first covered bridge. That's the, the Muddy Creek. The Muddy Creek. Pretty muddy. I guess it stays muddy, huh? I'm not sure. I think this is what the significance is. Is that it's the first bridge that was owned by a family and the, the government because um, Jacob wanted to build it, but he wanted the help of the of the township, township because it, there was a lot of farmers that traveled through here. It was a very marketing, you know, market right, area, right, and it was right, needed right. for a bridge to be there. So what happened was they went in half. They went in half. The family went in half, and the municipality went in half and built the bridge. And then, um, when it burnt down, the, the municipality wanted to take all the stone. But my grandma, my great grandma, said, "Hell no, you're not taking the stone. Put our half up on the hill." So when, so we, um, so my, we lived in the Narvon area over by the Welsh Mountain before we lived here. When I turned nine, we moved to the farm, right? So my dad just drove back and forth then. We, uh, my dad built a house over here by the field, um, and uh, he used that stone to build his chimney. Huh. So that stone that my great-grandmother fought for and put up on the hill, mm -hmm. my dad used to build his chimney out of. And it's a big chimney. It's an A-frame house. Huh. And so you can you see it from all parts in the house. Yep. Mm -hmm. So it's just a cool story. But yeah, it is. And that's uh, the and that's the remaining of the foundation, the remainder of it, right I, here. I, I, no, I don't or it think, was exactly I where it's exactly. So, this, so this has that has right. nothing to do with it. Is that some of the old stone? That probably no. the that may have was, been some of the old. Stone. The bridge wasn't like this. It no. was like that. It was just like how it was right here. Yeah. Like okay. The, yeah. That's the eagle. Yeah, I heard that. Yeah. That was an eagle. Uh, what did it yeah. sound like it came from here? Squawking. That's where the eagle's nest is. Yeah, the eagle's nest. The nest is probably around. Right. So, so if you look down here, you can pretty, if it's the winter time, you'd be able to see it. Huh. But with, oh, it's coming out. Yeah, way. okay, good. Because I thought I heard it from right it's there, and you're way. pointing there, and I'd just like to make certain that. Oh, that's definitely what it. I well, you know, I don't want it to die. So, what do you mean? What do you mean? Like, they, they were falling, falling like, they were like, falling down. Together, this limb cracked down over here. And gotcha. There was a limb on the uh, wire over there, and yep, it just needed some touch, uh, touching up. This magnolia right here was kind of falling all over. Yeah, that's right. Massive. Yeah. 
Redwood in Pennsylvania. of masculine and feminine energy. And I say that this tree right here. And I say that knowing absolutely nothing about trees other than the fact of what my eyes and my brain tell me. <coughs> and so do you have any reason why I say that? This one's not as pronounced as the other. In certain but spots. Very straight and sturdy, but then there's waves to it as well. Certainly. Right. Look how the tr how the branches meet the trunk. Look at other trees. Mm. Like it, if you go and you look, if you look at everything is as a symbol of the coming together of the yeah. male and the female. To exactly. you can see that in everything, and you can see it more obvious and less obvious. Look at that tree right there where the branches move the trunk. Like you can still see that there's a meat, but when you see that, there's like you know, oh, that looks familiar. Yeah. Yeah. So these, uh, this is a needle-bearing tree, but they lose their needles during. The uh, winter time. Really? So it's both a coniferous tree and a deciduous tree where it has cones, but it sheds its leaves or needles. They're soft as can be, and too. They're like ferns. Yep. Yeah, this is an unbelievable tree. They thought it was extinct, right? They did, yeah. And it's a cousin to the redwoods. Huh. Yeah, yeah. Would, yeah, you can see. Be, yeah. It's, a, it's a dawn redwood. You have the dawn red one, the bald oh, cypress, God. and the larch. Those are the three types of deciduous coniferous trees huh. yeah. and, and, and deciduous is, means they lose their leaves yep where like in oaks autumn. and maples and right stuff right like right that. Yep. Okay. huh yeah. but it's that? a conifer is, yeah. is that right yeah it's a cone bearing needle bearing right. tree yep. right wow and how did was this planted or did this like how do you think this got here this probably was planted the generation before maybe miles so it's probably been here for a hundred or so years but they grow fairly quick right like dad planted one in the back of his his house 20 years ago and it's it's a big tree you know huh yeah i have to say uh my visiting that fry farm was like you say very inspirational man to see ones who had a value set to keep a family legacy going for 10 generations. And, you know, how their, cust the, their custodianship of the land and wanting to honor the, the indigenous legacy that was there. And, you know, uh, yeah, man, I, it was, definitely a lot of food for thought and something else that stood out to me how right we're in this period where everyone's talking about the new ways this and the flower of life and you know presenting like uh alchemical practical daily science is something new ways something we're just discovering but when you really check how the early generations of Lancaster were living and we're like on that natural mystic frequency, you know, that really stood out to me. Without a doubt, without a doubt. And what, what, what really tickled me at the end, or like, you know, like, like kind of encapsulating all of this is besides this conversation, which, which uh, you and I are having right now. Uh, I am also in the process of putting together another presentation, like just on like the separate stuff. And, you know, like a lot of stuff we're talking about is this like this sorcery and this like, you know, it, it, it doesn't exactly feel good. And in a certain way, like it almost feels disempowering because we're like, wow, we've been born into this. And like, you know, all this stuff's been going on for so long. And that's what I'm getting into on this one particular presentation, which I'm doing. I'm really focusing in on what's going on down in, in, in Wilmington. I'm talking mm. about down in Wilmington. Mm. And so this is where it gets so interesting. So literally the morning before we met, I did my first run of the presentation and I stopped it in the middle of my recording. I'm like, this just isn't it. I'm not, I, I'm not hitting it yet. I'm not hitting it yet. 
So I close up, I close up, I close up. And then I, uh, that presentation and I drive on out to the farm and in just the conversation with, with, with Andre, he, uh, the, the family business is that of flowers and looking at this from a symbolic mystic level, like, you know, that really speaks to me. It's like flowers, like everything which you can look at what a flower represents. And so like, to me, that's what I'm seeing this family, like, you know, with that, what, what they feel like right now. So we're having this conversation and I ask them, I'm asking, them, I'm just curious, you know, just from a practical sense. I'm like, you know, you've got all these hundreds of acres and you're growing flowers. I'm like, who do you sell your flowers to? Like, who are your customers? Do you sell it to like, you know, to, to like businesses? And so he starts telling me about this. And out of all of the customers, he mentions, he literally mentions that he's bringing flowers to the exact location, the building, I'm not going to get into it right now, of where I'm doing all of this research, where I was focused on in that presentation before I came out, focused on all of the sorcery sort of stuff. And then I'm like, this total, like, you know, no planning, like you can't plan this type of like, you know, unfolding of, of, of the mystic. And he's like, yeah, I'm bringing flowers. This like, you know, this, this beautiful, this beautiful man who's got this beautiful heart. And like, I'm pointing out all of this sorcery. And he's like, yeah, we're feeding them with the purity of our flowers. And to me, and that's kind of how I want to close this out is like, yeah, we're bringing light to all of this timeline manipulation and all this stuff and all of this like unknown, which we don't know. And, and there's going to be a sense of like, what do we do? And you could go and see, like, listen, there's already something being built into this, 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 this uh, feedback loop, which is bringing that energy, that flower energy right back into there because we can't fight it. We got to go, as you said, it's right. that natural, like led to gold sort of alchemy, which, which our awareness, Awareness is bringing into light. So it is the observation, which I think you and I bring as present as presenters, but then also all of the people who are watching this, you know, we're bringing that into light as well. And this is how it's kind of showing itself in these small pieces. Well, I think that's a perfect segue to mention what we have vision for episode 11. You're going to play ball with y'all. I know. Uh, when we, I think it was episode nine, we, we, we touched on Ball and his relevance to this reality, you know? And uh, I got a lot of response, man. A lot of people uh, through email, in person, comments on the video. They ready. They ready for. They ready to play ball with us. They they ready for us to ball with them. Be some ballers out here, and decode ball. And I think it is very important, man. And it's so funny that uh, right from that point, even a lot more information about ball. I've just magnetized, you know. So, yeah, get ready. We we about to play ball with y'all, you know. On that note, let's go ahead and seal up 10.5. You know, uh, one mystic to another, bro. Salute.